call the roll. Commissioners Cavell? Here. Kowal? Here. McGillivray? Here. Powell is absent with notice. Charles? Present. Long is absent with notice. Moss? Yes, here. Marco? Here. Madam Chair, you have a comment? Okay, thank you very much. I'm here too. Uh, let's all stand oh, okay. for, oh, and Commissioner Woodward is here too. As, uh, as thank right. you. Let's stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on the agenda, we have approval of minutes. We have minutes for four of our previous meetings. I will entertain a motion. Commissioner McGilvery, supported by Commissioner Cavell. Does anybody have any comments or changes to the minutes? All right, um, go ahead and prompt the vote, please, on approval of the minutes. Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So the motion to uh, approve the minutes has been approved unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Next up is approval of the agenda. I need a motion for that. Commissioner Moss, supported by Commissioner McGilvery. Any comments on the agenda? Seeing none, uh, please prompt the vote. Yes. Hi, there's no audio. That's okay. That's okay. Can you hear us, Mr. Charles? I can now. Thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. thank I, I'm you. embarrassed it was me. <laughs> All right. So we're still, we're voting on approval of the agenda. <clears throat> All right. We have seven yeas, zero nays. Agenda is approved as written. Uh, next up is public comment. Do we have anybody from the public who cares to speak to us? Yes. Uh, please come to the end of the table, use a microphone, and state your name and where you live, please. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. My name is Catherine Kennedy. I'm from Lake Orion. Some of you know me not by now. And again, the lack of transparency to the public is very concerning. The fact that the last meeting was 899 page agenda that I couldn't even access until that morning because it was all transferred <coughs> to the new system is very problematic. The timing of this is very unbelievably problematic given you're in the middle of a budget cycle and you only have the ad hoc committees in the what the public is accustomed to going to to find the data but yet all the important meetings and the important standing committee data is in the other system it's not very transparent and I still do not see a way how in the new system version numbers or dates and times when they're actually executed is possible. I would like to know about that. I'm also concerned about the, it seems an overall defund the police, the sheriff got cut a million and a half, board gets a couple million. There's so much money flying around here without accountability, it scares me to death. 
I see very strong partisan policies that seem to mirror the misguided, in my opinion, Biden administration policies. And we've seen nothing more horrendous of what happens when politicians, instead of military, actually execute on an assignment overseas. We have to start using our own head and use the critical thinking that God gave us. We cannot be increasing the staff costs at the same time when the business community is down by 25% in Oakland County alone. How are we to expect that this is a, a positive direction? This is so misguided. And the fact that the feds gave us all this money inappropriately, they even changed the formula so that the people that lost the most jobs in the state got the most money. I don't know how many are aware of that. But they literally changed the formulas to benefit those who caused the most job losses on a state-by-state -state basis, which is why California did so well. New York did so well. And we're facing now another time with this issue of the immigration being so lax. Our entire country is in extreme risk of security issues. Self-imposed national security issues, self-imposed financial issues. And we're following suit in this county. If we stay on that direction, the fact that you're increasing jobs at the county level when we've lost so many businesses and so many are suffering during this COVID time, why are we increasing property taxes so much? And why is it so disparaging? The 3.84% in a year of pandemic, that's ridiculous. But I think it was 10% for Holly in different, very huge range. Yet I've heard it publicly stated there were no increases in taxes. But that's not what the documents would show. Uh, so, Ms. Kennedy, uh, your three minutes are up, so please wrap it up. Thank you. So I hope and pray that this commission opens its eyes and starts to realize the citizens do not want the sheriff to be reduced. We want full funding of our sheriff department. We want training. We want him to have the ability to recruit. There's a lot of things that have been taken away from this sheriff department, and he is so critical to our entire area. And we really need to be very careful these little welcoming week proposals and all these resolutions that are just backing up the Biden administration's misguided narratives for immigration that put us all at dire risk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else here for public comment? Seeing no one, I will close public comment at this time and we will move into item number seven, our budget hearings. And we have before us our last um, budget hearing for emergency management and homeland security. And before us we have Tom Hardesty and the folks he brought with him. So please introduce your team and tell us what you want to tell us. I will. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come back here. My apologies. Uh, last week we got a bit uh, tied up with other events on campus, so we appreciate you uh, giving us time again. Uh, as you know, we made an adjustment uh, this year that uh, changed uh, realignment with departments. So this will be our first time uh, with the Emergency Management and Homeland Security Department. Uh, that is with two divisions, uh, the Emergency Management Division led by Rob Seeley and the Building Safety Division led by Mike Crum. So I wanted to give them each just a few seconds to come up, give you a quick overview of their divisions, and then we'll, uh, we'll delve a little deeper into things. Good morning, commissioners. I'm Rob Seeley, the Chief of Emergency Management. Thank you for listening to us today. Um, currently, we have nine positions in emergency management. That's traditionally what we've had for many years. Uh, we also have six additional uh, positions right now. Those have been uh, borrowed from other parts of the county. Um, those are for COVID reasons, so they're running our warehouse and doing other things. Uh, we have two parts of our, our uh, staff. One is emergency management and one is our warehouse. In emergency management, we currently monitor and maintain 276 sirens. We do county drills with building safety. 
Uh, we run our emergency operations center and our program that's called OKOC. We do training and exercises throughout the county um, with all the municipalities in the county. We do grants. Uh, we have our local emergency planning committee that does things with our hazard, hazard, hazardous materials in the county. And uh, we're in the process, and I know Mr. Hartsey will talk about it, of gaining the incident management team from the county to our staff. We also are running the warehouse. We have currently moved into a leased space that is 25,000 square feet in which we are storing all of the PPE that we are still providing to doctors, dentists, offices, long-term cares throughout the county, as well as our county offices and, and county folks. Uh, we have purchased a box truck that's allowing us to do those deliveries and make those deliveries. We're leasing three vans and we have six trailers. The three vans we're leasing is just from Motor Pool. They're internal Oakland County vehicles that aren't being used. Um, and we are currently in the process of getting an inventory management system for that warehouse. So we have uh, three county employees that are working in that warehouse that are, are been hired by the county and then three others that are borrowed from Children's Village and Economic Development. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike Crum and I am the Chief of Building Safety and I've been here for a few months so it's all new for me. Um, we have 24 hour dispatch center uh, in building safety that helps with the Water Resource Commission, with the facilities management, and also with emergency management. We also have staff inside of county buildings after hours, and we make sure that there are no maintenance issues or security issues inside of those buildings. We do that 24 hours a day um, and on the weekends. And then we have a component of building safety that does our security cameras, our access control, and any alarms on campus. So uh, we are busy. 24 hours a day, making sure the complex or the, the buildings that we have here in Oakland County are safe and secure. Uh, our office recently in, in took over the emergency equipment on campus, so that include the automated external defibrillators, the AEDs, the first aid kits, the striker chairs that we see in some of the uh, stairwells, and the Stop the Bleed initiative. Um, and we are in the process of making sure that those are accessible to all and um, we have training for our staff in the area. So thank you for the time and I'm happy to answer questions after Director Hardesty. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Now I, I know your budget, you're only seeing the emergency management side. Uh, with the, the reorg, building safety is still financially under facilities and maintenance uh, due to them working in, in more of an enterprise system, but I wanted to have them here um, I know Mike and I were, were here during facilities budget, but I know you were focused on other things. So if you had questions that way, uh, we could answer them. Uh, but the, so financially, they're still in two different budget places that you'll see those. I know when Rob mentioned staff earlier, those are, we haven't technically added any staff. They're working off NTEC contracts with emergency services and that's, you'll actually notice in our budget, for example, our professional services is well over budget. Well, that's all that we're seeking FEMA reimbursement for, uh, which I, we brought to the committee last time as well, uh, for some of those temporary assignments to handle duties specifically related to the pandemic. Um, uh, Rob also mentioned the uh, incident management team. So the incident management team is a, uh, it's a conglomeration of, of people from around the county. Traditionally, it's been handled by Mavis 3201, which is what you might know as the paid on call or part-time agencies. So that's a, a group of people that have been trained, come out together to help during major incidents. Uh, some of that team responded here to White Lake uh, during the tornado. Uh, they went to Midland. Uh, they were actually at the TCF Center in Detroit uh, during the pandemic. So it, right now, it's, it's kind of been used by half the county. So to bring that group uh, under the emergency management, which was actually at the request of those groups, will help make this a resource that's available to the entire county. Uh, the, the general annual expenses are actually pretty low. They're in the neighborhood of thirty dollars to $40,000 for equipment maintenance. But by bringing that group under the county, we would have the opportunity to then turn around and bill back for some of those things. For example, just the TCF Center alone um, would have had the ability to recoup more than $30,000 from FEMA 
for those costs if the team were, were organized under us. So uh, while we certainly hope that team uh, won't be needed much, they are a tremendous benefit to any, it would be a tremendous benefit to any uh, city, village, or township in the county uh, during a, a major incident to, to help manage that. Um, the other reason um, I wanted to bring both here is most of the, the we did not, uh, fortunately, uh, Kyle and Lynn had allowed us not to have to, to seek a 3% personnel cost. With only nine full-time employees, we would be cutting more than 10% to just cut an individual. And, and right now, during the pandemic, and with the weather we're seeing, that would certainly be a difficult time for us. So we were fortunate that they uh, gave us a bit of a, a, a waiver on that point. And then as we look to, to combine the two departments, we're actually looking to take one of our part-time spots that would help work for both. So we're looking to move safety into our building, and then we would have one person who would handle IDs on the safety side. She already works handling a Sarah Title III material plans, all those kind of things. So by putting the two in, in one place, it helps that staff be able to work both ways. So with that, I'd certainly be open to any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, you have a newly restructured department, so getting it going is kind yeah, of Yeah, there's not, not a lot of history, you know, uh, uh, overall, all budget-wise, especially on the safety side, because it's been ingrained uh, with uh, facilities and maintenance, it's going to probably take us a couple of years to get some good history to be able to, to show that. OK. Um, I'll open the floor up. Uh, Commissioner Gershenson. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to you and your team. Um, on the safety side of it, do you, how do you interface with the sheriff? Do you want me to answer? You can come on up, too. So one of the, um, they're able to, to monitor uh, for Sheriff's Dispatch. Sheriff's Dispatch will contact them. They have different missions. You know, the Sheriff's Department is handling criminal complaints, emergency calls, uh, safety is handling. So for example, during the storms, the Sheriff's Office is very busy getting 911 calls on lines down and those kind of things. They're handling hundreds of phone calls for the Water Resource Commission for water and basements. One, one of the other reasons that we've uh, proposed to move safety into our building is we would actually put safety's dispatch across the hall from sheriff's dispatch. And while certainly you can pick up a phone and call, sometimes it's just being close to each other, the ability to communicate. Sometimes it's not while well, things are going on uh, to be able to talk, but to be able to walk across the hall uh, when there are issues. Um, so they, they have different missions, but they work together. But I don't know if you have anything you want to, there might be something you want to add to that. No, thank you. Um, we, we support them every way that we can from any calls on complex. And with the cameras, we are uh, helping them to, to get the information they need from all the security cameras on campus. So there is a good inter collaboration and integration between the two. Um, and we, on the 911 calls and emergency calls, we're, we're there to support that. But on the on-campus calls, for instance, a Board of Commissioners meeting, are you monitoring that as well as we do have the sheriffs at our meetings? But are you monitoring that as well? We do. We have safety attendants in the building, and they're, they're helping with some of the doors. Um, but for the emergencies, the sheriff would, would handle the call, and, and we would support them and help them <coughs> any way we can. But we are monitoring at the same time, yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, anybody else have questions? Commissioner McGilvery. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I see. I'm supposed to be following along the list here. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll be next to Mr. Commissioner Cabell. Um, <laughs> Just learning. My question is, uh, the deputies that we see around uh, this building here, whether it be for the court, at the doors coming in, uh, the people that are here during our meetings, does that fall under building safety or does that fall under something different that falls on they they fall under the sheriff's office those inside um, fall under I believe it's Captain McClellan and Lieutenant Tovar who handle all of the deputies that are inside the buildings now that doesn't mean again that we don't communicate you know with the incident last week at the health department I'm meeting with Lieutenant Tovar who's the the 
the complex lieutenant and we're, we're talking about, you know, what are the best things that we need to do? We're using the cameras. We're talking about building, poly you know, do we need to lock down the building? Do we need to re reroute where employees are coming in? So those staff are, are their responsibility, but we communicate regularly. Uh, let me follow that up with another question. <laughs> when it comes to, let's say, the, the court deputies, whether it be at the front door or in the court rooms, is that charged to the court? Is that in the budget? Is it charged to the court? Is it charged to the sheriff? Where is that at? I'll be honest with you. The, the deputies aren't part of any of mine, so I, I can't answer that question. Okay. I'm not sure. Thank you. I, I guess to help, some of our st the, the safety staff that work in the courts at night, that's charged to the court. So I don't know if it's similar for the sheriff. Right. But I think that's the same case for the, for the courts and the parks and the others that you use. Okay. okay. So just to clarify, the charges for those security mm -hmm. people reside within the department that they are taking care of? Correct. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? No, that's it. Okay. Commissioner Cavell. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I was, and this might be a longer conversation offline, but I was just curious. I realized when looking through this and hearing what you said, you're a department of nine, and you do management of emergencies, so your ability to, I guess, kind of balloon up in a crisis is important. And local help seems to be important in having those relationships and you mentioned kind of working with half the county in ways. What sort of things might, say, Ferndale, Hazel Park, Huntington Woods, Oak Park have as emergencies that you've interacted with? And again, if it's a longer thing, happy to do that. Or yeah. Yeah. So to your, to your first part about the yeah. staff of nine in, in that division, it, integration and coordination is, is really what we do. So the, the, the EOC is set for more than 40, and that's not all our staff. So sure. for example, the one of the Ferndale fire chief, the last fire chief, was a, a fire representative that would come to the EOC. So during the pandemic, um, he spent some time in our EOC or virtually on meetings helping with coordination and, and response of that. And that, that's how we, we force multiply, the same four departments and divisions within the county. So the pandemic is a health emergency. So health department might be the lead in that, but it's a countywide event. Yes, it's a health emergency, but it's a countywide event. So now we're, we're helping work around those other groups to support health and the things that they might need. A Rob had mentioned staff. So, you know, one department or one division like Children's Village that was going through because of the pandemic may not have had a work or staffing for people at that time, then they loan them out and they're, they're helping at uh, vaccine sites. They're helping in the warehouse. They're doing other things. So that's why, you know, um, we're able to get by with not having a huge staff because it's a lot about planning uh, for the future. So uh, as far as incidents in Ferndale, you know, we've had hazardous material spills in the, in the south end of the county, the, the, you know, the famous green ooze in Madison Heights, which fortunately we're not done with yet, uh, but have made a long uh, ways through uh, incidents such as the um, Arts Beats and Eats and the Woodward Dream Crows, those are all major events that, that planning that, that we're involved in as well. Um, so the, the IMT specifically was is the one piece that's part of it, but we work routinely with uh, agencies all over the county. Okay, thanks. And just curious, um, no, never mind, never mind, I'm done. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Cavell. Next up is Commissioner Woodward. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Tom and your team, thank you very much. Uh, my question, I mean, I guess budget related specific things. So I know we're still going through the FEMA reimbursement for the 10 million yes. that we set aside. Do we have any idea when that, I mean, do we expect that that whole 10 million to be reimbursed? Do we, um, I know we were looking for potentially some state dollars. I know that some of that's caught up in legislative action up in, in Lansing. Um, Can you speak into the microphone, oh, I'm sorry. please? Yes. Thank you. That's me, reconfigure. All right, um, I, I was asking about um, kind of the status of our FEMA reimbursement for the our, uh, 
for our pandemic response across the county organization, but specifically for the $10 million that we advanced to make certain that, I mean, we could do the things that we've been doing over the last um, um, 18 months or so. So and could you elaborate a little bit about where we are on that in that process? Certainly. I think of that $10 million, we um, obligated around 8.4, and we have 8.3 million in uh, expenses documented that we believe are FEMA eligible. Now, um, assuming the uh, FEMA grant paperwork passes the board this week, we'll have about 1.2 million uh, that should be coming to us here in the, the following month or so thereafter. Um, I, I would love to be able to give you a nice exact timeline after that. Um, our largest project um, that is at the state level is over five million in personal protective equipment. Um, I've not been able to find out from them whether they think it might be a month, six months, or two years. They they will give no timeline uh, on that. So it's the states. So FEMA is the the keeper of the funds, and they go through some preliminary, and then it goes to the state, and the state is the one that actually puts together the grant package and, and hands it to us. So prior to that, they're reviewing all that 5.1 million in PPE and. We have to make sure that it, it fits the FEMA guidelines. You know, it's got to be, they're a little wider in this case than normal, but generally for public, um, meaning public like cities, villages, and townships. Um, in this case, they allowed healthcare workers, but not for the general public. So there's a lot of, of detail that they go through and look at that. So I would expect that it would be upwards of another year. I would not be surprised before. Um, you know, we, we submitted our very first small project of $87,000 in June of last year, and that's the first one that, that came it's through that through. we're just seeing now, and that's 14 months later. Okay. All right. It's, I mean, working its way through the process. Yes. Um, the, the next question is related to this um, of the 1.7 of that 10 million that we haven't allocated yet, and I don't know if you're the right person or if someone else from the administration is better suited. Uh, are we rolling that money over to continue, or I mean, how is that? being reconciled in this budget. This is the balance of the, the original initial $10 million we set aside to do pandemic response. Um, are we planning, are we going to continue that moving forward, planning to add to that in the same structure that it currently is? Where are we? So, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, I provided an update to this committee last week, and obviously okay. you weren't here. Um, you know, so we're sorting through, you know, all of the fund sources that have run through the county for response to the pandemic over the last year between FEMA, CARES Act, uh, you know, grants the health department has received, um, the 10 million uh, of, of general fund for the pandemic committee, and then looking at, you know, what costs we need to start funding with ARP dollars. So we are planning to bring a resolution uh, to this committee in two weeks to kind of clean up FY21, make thing, make sure we've got things squared away, that we're maximizing all those federal sources, and then moving into FY22, you know, we would start to use a, a li limited amount of ARP dollars for things that need to continue. So our intent would be you know, to, to work with you to close out that 10 million, you know, which was kind of intended as an advance Right. against these other funding sources. Got so it. that's where we are. Okay. At this point, you know, I bring most of the stuff to the committee. You, that committee's not approved to spend that 1.7, so I don't, haven't really considered that on the table yet unless we take it there and ask, ask you for things to spend it, so. But the committee is authorized to release those funds yes. per request. Yes, right, correct. No, there hasn't been any additional requests. I, I bring it up, and I know there's been some conversation around, I mean, as, I mean, younger people eligible for vaccine, and like, should we be using some of those dollars to help? I mean, bolster that, communicate, and I mean, support those efforts as well as mm -hmm. um, address any other uh, vaccine hesitancy to, I mean, raise the rates across uh, across the county. And those are conversations that can work out through this process and making certain that again, the, the resources are there, and we're maximizing the resources to um, get through this pandemic. Um, related. Um, uh, we relate, I mean, it relate to the pandemic response. We have the facility. We're stocking up with PPE. That's one of like the biggest like focus. And I mean, I've had an opportunity. I've driven by it, but I have not been in it. But I've, um, you've got an incredible team running things. Can you give just an update? I mean, do we have enough space to be able to handle the PPE acquisition that's needed to help support and specifically, um, 
do we have enough masks in circulation to help make sure that schools and others have access to these um, to this PPE and that they're not on their own trying to figure out what they're going to do? It, the the space is actually perfect. It's almost exactly the size that that we were looking at, and and and. Rob, who has a long history of logistics, not just here, but with the uh, Air National Guard and working at the state EOC, was was a great help in this. But the warehouse is a perfect size. We are in, in I call it in good shape with PPE. We've been ordering just uh, minor things, occasionally some gloves or some particular size mask. We ordered some children's mask as, as we look to planning uh, towards vaccine being opened up possibly for under the age of 12. Uh, but at this point, with your all support and the administration support, we have been able uh, to stock up in PPE and have enough, not only for, for what we're doing right now, but we have a, a, a plan if, if, unfortunately, it gets worse and we have to, to go back into the mode we were last year, we are in much better shape right now and, and able to respond to that immediately. And we're still pushing out. Uh, PPE. We could still get a couple hundred, two to three hundred orders a week uh, right now, and we continue to fill those. The state uh, still has been supplying some uh, PPE when we need it for certain items, so we'll con continue to put those in the hands of those that need them. Great. Um, two more questions, Madam, Madam Chair. Um, I want to shift a little bit to elections. Um, certainly, I mean, the last election, we entered some unprecedented time. Um, lots of media reports and just anecdotal conversations with uh, local clerks and election workers and some of the uh, uh, well, disappointing uh, threats on their lives and everything. So I'm looking to this November, but certainly 2022, um, from a Homeland Security perspective, do we have, I mean, do we have the resources and personnel to uh, strategically put in plans to, I mean, to, to get in front of those things. I heard, I mean, everything from calls trying to figure out when absentee ballots were being driven and they wanted to follow along with armed caravans to um, uh, I mean, in, in confrontations of individual election workers. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I am concerned from a security point of view. And, uh, and do, we have, do we have the resources? Are we, are we putting in some preliminary plans to have contingencies put in place in coordination, obviously, with local law enforcement? Um, to prepare for these type of events that, at least at this moment in history, um, are, 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 are intense and passions on, strong passions on, on all sides of the issues yeah, um, a, going forward. Our, our role is, is with anything as we look at an all hazards approach is helping with planning and preparation. We're, we're not the security, the sheriff's office uh, handles that e either in their areas or local law enforcement in theirs. But yes, we have, regular communications with the church so ch clerk's office and the chief of elections. Um, there are alternate communication uh, things, you know, if the phones go down, if this goes down, we, we always look to go three deep. So uh, we have had some of those discussions. We'll, we'll continue to work through those plans. Um, and again, we communicate routinely with the, the sheriff's office if it gets into uh, any, whether it's cyber threats right now, it is always a concern. Uh, we have been working with the IT department and the IT security division as we work through some tabletops and plannings. We have a, a call uh, this afternoon with them at, at 2 o'clock uh, talking about our EOC software management and how do we make sure that that's resilient and up and running. So to answer your question, yes, yes. with them and, and with all the little pieces that kind of feed into that, like IT and those things right. to make sure that we're as prepared as we can be. Right. And I mean, I guess along those lines, and I mean, I hope it goes without saying that if there are additional resources needed either to support manpower, equipment, what have you, to ensure that our elections remain, I mean, the safest, and I mean, I, I, I'm prepared to spare no expense to make certain that we have that. And so please always feel free to bring those requests forward. And I mean, we, I mean, we'll work towards trying to find a way to make those things happen. I mean, to be a model. We certainly, certainly appreciate that. Not on this, really every topic the board has been supportive. My, my general philosophy has always been not to ask for it up front and then try to put a plan together, but to work through a plan, look at what we really need and how we might use it, and then, and then come forward with that request. Great. And then the last thing, I mean, around, I mean, some of the uh, severe weather that we've had of late, 
um, with floodings and power outages and all those types of things. How does our how does our Homeland Security interface with that? I mean, do we op do we activate the operation center when those type of events happen to help with the coordination and working with the utilities? Um, I know. I mean, I remember as if it was yesterday, the great flood of 2014, um, and I hear horrifying stories because of the intensity of the storms that the basin of water is filling up at a faster rate than ever before. It just, thank goodness, and um, this year those storms have been shorter in duration than others. And so, I mean, with these, these I mean, these climate change events that are happening. Um, what uh, I guess, like, how? I mean, how are we interfacing? And again, are are we amply funded and resourced to uh, support local communities, local response, and working with? I mean, all these, all the, all the entities that play a role in all this. Certainly, and and weather is always part of our, our planning process, and and the emergency management side plays, I think, a key role there. So, five staff, one is on call all the time. So, anytime there's a severe storm, there's emergency management staff in the EOC. Now that's who activates the weather sirens. Safety, uh, which I think one of the reasons that the termination to put the two on the same department is the backup there. They, they have the ability to activate those as well if need be, if for some reason we have an issue. Uh, but yes, for example, during the, the tornado event in White Lake, um, there were staff at the EOC. Rob was actually uh, leading it then. We had uh, uh, Mr. Kowal actually spent some time at the EOC there when they had some limited uh, communication and power abilities at their site. Uh, but, but again, that's where are the integration. So what resources might they need? You know, where can we find those resources? That's really our role is helping coordinate. If you had that same event that hit five communities, you know, and now we've got to find those resources maybe even from outside the county because they're all being used up. You know, how do we get them? Where do we get them to first? Sometimes having to make those difficult choices, where do they get to first and helping them get there? So it's it's a, um, a, a back to the, the same issue that you will hear us harp on, which is, uh, preparation, planning, and, and training, you know, the, the tabletops that, that we uh, push to do. Uh, we'll be uh, coming to you later this year with our hazard mitigation grant, which is the grant to help us evaluate what hazards are out there, look at those, prioritize those, and then look at how, how, how do we respond and address those. Because again, our philosophy is always going to be an all hazards approach. If we have an urban search and rescue team, they might be useful. It's a building collapse. So whether that building collapsed from water, it collapsed from fire, or it co collapsed from a terrorism event. It, I'm not trying to minimize why that might be, but the focus is that we have that team, we know how to get that team there, and they know how to do what they need to do when that building collapses. So we're always looking at all those approaches and how we can integrate them together in that response. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Commissioner Charles, and she's on the video. Oh. Yes, thank you, Ms. Chair. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to mention uh, to be in compliance with the Open Meetings Act that I am in the beautiful city of Southfield, uh, in the beautiful county of Oakland, and participating remotely uh, on an abundance of caution. So that is why I'm not there due to health. I do want to ask Mr. Hardesty, and it's great to see you, your shoulders, the back of your jacket. Um, <laughs> I wanted to double check with you, and uh, I guess I'm asking for a little bit of privilege here, which is just simply that I know it may not be contained in this budget highlight, but you know, back on August 3rd, the governor uh, did the, the, the declared the state of emergency. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if Chairman Woodward's question alluded to this, but I was just curious for, for residents in Farmington, Farmington Hills, and Southfield that were covered in that in that emergency uh, declaration, do you have any recommendations on what residents should do? Is there somewhere they should visit online? Is there a number they should call? H how is Oakland County uh, working through that system? Because it says Homeland Security and Emergency Management will be able to get additional resources, if you could speak to that. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. So there, there are, you'll see two disaster declarations um, from the federal and state. So a, a federal declaration, those are larger, widespread. You, you saw that issue down in Louisiana. Um, we have seen it for some in Michigan. The state 
when the state issues a declaration, it's only when the federal government hasn't. So the, the state will not uh, provide what they call it Section 19 funding. Part of that state statute says only if the federal government did not declare and is not going to provide money. So with the federal government, there are two different pieces. There's funds for communities, for government, and there are funds for people. So with some flooding in June, there has been some discussion, and you may have seen that the, the governor asked the federal government to add Oakland and Macomb counties. That's for individual assistance, looking to if there were people who had major or destroyed homes, damage, that they could seek individual assistance. So I say all that to get back to the state declaration for Farmington, Farmington Hills, and Southfield. There was no federal declaration, so there is no individual assistance. The declaration is state funding to help those communities with the costs that they might have incurred for overtime, for public safety, police, fire, DPW that came out for some of the cleanup costs, and they will help reimburse them for that. And there's a formula based on the amount of money they spent, their city's budget, um, and some the size of the city that, that work into that. But there was not individual assistance. So if there are people looking for individual assistance that, you know, they've, they've been hit with that two or three or six inches of water repeatedly, they can call our office and we can help point them to some volunteer organizations depending on where they're at, try to help find them some, some help. But there, there is not at this point, um, money available to individuals uh, from that event, if that helps. That, that helps greatly. And if I may chair, um, Mr. Hardesty, do most municipalities already know that and have like a point person who, I guess my question is just simply, is that widely known that uh, cities would have to, municipalities would have to do the reaching out? Because for example, um, uh, the park, the big, wonderful Inglenook Park on 12 Mile had at least a dozen trees fall. And so would that be an example where the city would reach out to say, you guys just add, add supports for DPW? Yeah, so that uh, Justin Beck is the emergency manager in Southfield. He does a, a great job. Um, there are, I don't want to get in too far into weeds, there are four communities uh, in the county, actually a fifth one, Waterford was added, who, who have a bit of a, a unique relationship there of a size and a time that they can actually go directly with the state and they don't have to go through us all the other ones do although the reality is we work very closely and very well with all of them so so we did send up a letter in support of Southfield uh, their declaration but but yeah we uh, each community has a designated emergency manager uh, that they have to report that to us so we have somebody that we know we can communicate this information with regularly Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Hardesty. Um, Commissioner Gershenson. Well, thank you. Uh, this brings to mind that during that last flooding, there were residents that really suffered. Um, I know in particular there was a uh, there were two diabetic families who who their uh, insulin was was ruined and um, they didn't have the funding to to replace. And you were great. We worked together and and the health department was great. But it brought to mind that there is a need for us, and it, it is gonna be one of my budget requests, that we establish some sort of emergency funding for our residents that are suffering at the moment and really need assistance. And I understand, I, I didn't realize you did have a staff person that's available 24 hours. We have somebody on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So and yeah, maybe. I know that uh, County Executive Coulter has a meeting set up with DTE because I'm kind of thinking maybe it would be some sort of reimbursement program that I'll mention at that meeting. But I, I, I know I have talked to you about this before, but I think that this last storm showed that there are residents that really are impacted and need immediate assistance, and certainly that's an emergency. Yeah, and, and with insulin being a, a drug, it, it posed some, some unique challenges. But, right. but fortunately, we're able to kind of find the, the right resource 
and, and get them pointed in the right, right. direction. Right, but then there were those people who lost their food. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of legitimate emergencies of Oakland County residents that I feel we need to set something in place to, to help them quickly. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Do any of the other commissioners have any more questions? Um, I need a motion to receive and file the report from the Homeland Security and uh, Emergency Management Department. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Kowal, supported by Commissioner McGilvery. Uh, could you prompt the vote to receive and file? Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay, we have a, a unanimous vote to receive and file your report. Thank you for coming before us today. It was very informative. Thank you, Commissioner, for your time. Okay. Next up. The fun stuff. Next up is item eight, the fiscal year 2022 to 2024 Oakland County budget. Item A is the county executive recommended budget. Um, and remind me again, okay, let me get my script out so I know what I'm doing here. I believe we just need a motion. Thank you. I need a motion to, to um, I'll move to recommend the budget. Approval, okay. Approval of the county executive budget recommendation for. Right, okay, so moved by Commissioner Woodward, supported by Commissioner Cavell. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Jen and Ms. Sankis. Good morning. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think we have any, any comments. We just want to be available for, for questions right. or uh, discussion on the amendments. I, I will say that you, um, on the website and handed out to each of you as a copy of the updated amendment list, the changes since the last meeting that have taken place our item B3, which is shifting a position um, that was requested with the budget in the sheriff's office. Um, instead of being a position, it was um, suggested to be a uh, contracted service under the professional services budget of the sheriff's office. So that's B3. So there's no net impact to the overall budget. It's reducing the per, uh, personnel budget and putting it in professional services within the sheriff's office. And then since the last meeting, there are several amendments that are in section C of the um, amendment list. And those are uh, C10 through C13 um, as additional new requests um, as submitted by the Board of Commissioners. So C1 through C8 are more or less technical cor corrections to the budget um, uh, from the recommendation. C9 through 13 are requests that were submitted by uh, the Board of Commissioners for various items. So C9. We have a hard copy. And actually, I have an extra hard copy. Oh. Thank you. So there be a motion for each section? Okay, so we'll have a motion for A, B, and C. Yeah, um, right now, uh, oh, so the current item is section A, so now we're on section A. Okay, well, so our we need a, first we need a motion, motion for we amendment. didn't vote on yet. Yeah, well, so we have the motion for the budget, and then we'll take the amendments in sections. So we'll do A, B, B and, and C, we'll probably and we'll take back sections of C, bill. and then do the remainder of C one by one. Okay. So, so I'll move um, amendments in section A. Okay. Again, these are, the, I mean, the technical amendments um, as a result of any activities since the... Uh, the board I, resolutions. The, uh, yes, board resolutions since the uh, presentation um, in July 1. So I'll move A. 
Okay, and supported by Commissioner Kowal. Uh, do we have any discussion on Section A? Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I mean, Madam Chair, I, I mean, these are again, these are resolutions that have been adopted by the board since the, the start. Um, I mean, capturing grant dollars that have come in and uh, accounting of expenses that were not, I mean, part of the original one. Right. right. So when Mr. Jen says these are technical corrections, it's basically we've already approved this since the original budget presentation was made a few weeks ago. These are ones that we've approved through the board since then, and we're just capturing all them in Section A. So Section A is for resolutions that have been adopted by the board. Exactly. So Section C includes some technical adjustments to the budget. So okay. Section A are resolutions themselves. Okay. So these are all resolutions that have already been passed. Um, okay. So I think we can prompt the vote on Section A. Yes. <laughs> the bellowing voice of Commissioner Gilbert. Motion carried. Okay, the motion carries unanimously to approve Section A. We'll move on to Section B, Personnel Related Amendments, Committee Salary Recommendation Report. Does anybody have any questions or comments on this section? I'll, I need a motion to for, on Section B, Commissioner McGillivray, supported by Commissioner Cavell. Uh, if there's no comments or questions, let's prompt the vote on Section B. Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously to approve Section B. And now we're going to move on to amending the budget by approving Section C, Finance Committee recommendations. Um, Commissioner Woodward. Yeah, can I move um, amendments C1 through 8? I think these capture the technical adjustments. Correct me, Ron. Correct. Okay, so let's move those okay. and then and then we can go through the other ones one by one. Okay, so the motion is to uh, break this out and uh, approve sec uh, items one through eight under section C. I need a second to that motion. Commissioner Cavell, any discussion? Okay, then uh, let's go ahead and prompt the vote on items one through eight of section C. Yes. Did you need to save your vote? Oh, yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> You'd think I'd know better by now. <laughs> it's hard running the meeting. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep track. Right. All right. We have passed items one through eight of section C unanimously. Moving on to item number nine. The Board of Commissioners requests to increase annual funding for the board literacy project. Um, Commissioner Moss, supported by Commissioner Kowal. So, Commissioner Woodward, do you want to talk sure. to this, or do you want me to? Yeah, I mean, um, well, I'll, I'll start, and I mean, I guess in turn, do we, one, I'm not completely sure of what this additional $30,000 would be used for, um, addressing literacy, improving literacy, um, and um, I imagine this is specifically to the Oakland County Literacy Council. Um, as we have already, uh, we, we do provide some um, uh, sustainable funding for them. Uh, one, how is this integrated with workforce development and the Oakland 80 initiative? Um, which, I mean, I think we should have that conversation. And I, um, 
I mean, our, one of our past colleagues, or those who served before with uh, Commissioner Taub and I had a conversation a couple months ago um, that led to a conversation with the executive director of um, the Literacy Council, and in fact, I asked her to put together a proposal um, that looks at eligibility of potential ARPA dollars to do something even more robust than this. And I just think that there needs to be some additional conversations before um, I mean, approving this. So I'm going to be voting no right now, not no against the idea um, and not against the plan, but until we see a plan to see how it integrates and builds on the things that we currently are doing and what are the goals and um, anticipated impact of these additional dollars to increase services um, and improve literacy across Oakland County, um, I'm going to vote no now. But I mean, happy to work with, I mean, those really, I mean, care about this and um, I mean, possibly look towards a resolution um, between now and the board voting on the uh, uh, on the budget later this month or later in September. Um, would this be a good time to talk about the bigger discussion about actually item number thirteen? Um, uh, sure, because yeah, I, I see the literacy uh, item as a piece of that. It could be. I mean, I. Let me just stop here for a second and kind of fill everybody else in on, on the discussions that we've been having between the chairman and management and budget and some different folks. Um, and some of you from my caucus know that we've been trying to move in this direction. Last year, the Board of Commissioners spent $1.3 million on various projects, whether it was Better for Breakfast or Trees or... Uh, the lights out at Waterford Oaks, all of those were uh, expenses. They added up to about $1.3 million, but it was hard, it is hard to go through our budget and see where all of those are. So I've been talking with various folks to say, can we make this more standard and transparent? And what we've come to, and it's here as actually item number 13, is that we would have $300,000 that was set aside for the Board of Commissioners for smaller kinds of projects, $50,000 and less. The literacy one might fall into this, this as a category. Um, and then a bigger million dollar uh, appropriation, not appropriation, but uh, set in the budget for um, those bigger projects that might take more coordination across departments or with locals or whatever and be a bigger dollar figure. So um, the, the Democratic Caucus has a whole list of items that they want, you know, ideas that the different commissioners have for things they want put into the budget. The Republican Caucus sent me a letter le yesterday with, you know, a list of their items. And the thought is that we don't have to get them all approved in the next two weeks. That in fact, let's put a process together whereby we have a standard set of how you go about getting this funding moved forward um, that uh, requires some level of coordination and um, fact finding, hoping that it's easier to move projects through and also easier to prioritize. So. Um, I think for me, that's one reason this literacy issue, it's in the budget this year. And, um, and so mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it should fall into that bigger picture of funding. I mean, chances are we'll go ahead and fund it even if we do it in a little different structure um, because we're all talking about supporting it. It's just do we, increase the line item in the budget this year for it separately, I think is the question for number nine. Commissioner Kowal. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd be a little bit concerned that there would be a gap in funding in that regard, although, and um, this was done in conjunction with um, our workforce development, uh, Jennifer Llewellyn, uh, we've uh, heard instances of, you know, we all know that jobs need to be filled and people need jobs, but certain jobs require math skills that um, uh, 
candidates did not have. And then, of course, the reading skills as well. So that was the impetus uh, behind this. There's all kinds of stories of success uh, as a result of the, um, the, the program, just the literacy program, just the 10,000 we had done before. So in an effort to reach out to more people, and I certainly think it speaks to the Oakland 80 uh, objective to uh, increase the reading part to 20,000 and add the math literacy for 20,000 to that. I would uh, urge that we go ahead and, and uh, adopt that today and we can certainly have discussions going forward about what other funding that we might be able to um, apply towards uh, this, you know, whether ARPA funding can, um, can be applied towards this. Um, I, th I think it's more than a worthy endeavor. I think you should have all received um, the uh, piece that was put together outlining all of the, um, you know, pluses of this program and the objectives of this program. Uh, you know, the low literacy and numeracy cost the U.S. 457, 457 billion. Um, you know, it's, it's a problem and we need to be able to get people, um, it's, it's sad how some people, adults even, still can't read. And um, this program is, has been able to, to help many people to finally be able to read and be able to function in their lives better as well as obviously be able to qualify for jobs. So I would urge that we go ahead and adopt this today. And uh, I see Commissioner Cavell would like to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm going to vote yes on this. Uh, I understand the Commissioner Woodward's concerns or questions about Oakland 80, but to echo what Commissioner Kowal said, we work together on this, and this is a good idea. And if we're thinking about Oakland 80, which is the goal to get 80% of us to have post-secondary education or certificates of some sort that's not necessarily giving money to people that already have master's degrees. It's helping people learn up that need math mm -hmm. and language support to then be able to get to the place where they can get a post-secondary certificate. So uh, it seems like it tracks with Oakland 80. With the concerns about ARP, totally understand that. Um, Maybe we could come back for a bigger ask later. That sounds very compelling. However, to what Commissioner Kowal said, people got to get paid in the meantime while we're taking our time figuring out how to use that ARP dollars, which then also leaves a question for, is that a priority of the rest of the commission when this has already been identified as something here now? And then the last thing uh, to what you said, Commissioner Markham, I hear what you're thinking in getting this all organized, and I agree with that. but. This is kind of the, like uh, we're in mid-stride with this. So my perspective on this is we worked with, well, you and the chair worked with the administration to get $1.3 million set aside, not $1.297 million set aside, right? The Whatever 30000 minus 1.3 is, <laughs> that we don't want to cut ourselves a little bit. You know, I know it's not that much of an expense, but it still feels like us giving away a little bit of something that we don't have to. Okay, so thank you. I will just answer that piece of it. The sure. 1.3, like I said, came from the fact that we basically spent that last year. Right. So if we spent money on this line item last year, it was part of that 1.3. Well, that's we, all. we spent 10 on it. This is right. an ask and, for And that's what I'm saying is <coughs> that 10 is in the 1.3, so it's not like we're ignoring this by any means. But okay, okay your point is, is taken. Thank um, you. Commissioner Gershenson. So thank you. Um, so just to clarify for me then, the 10 is going through in this new budget. Yeah. So then I am going to support waiting on this additional 30 because uh, I think we are trying to put a process in place. It's not as if they're not getting money. Um, they are getting the, the line item We've, we will hopefully approve. But um, I think that this new system we're trying to establish will help us all. We, we all have many priorities. I consider this a worthy priority. I, I, won't, I, I can't imagine not supporting this, but I do want to have all the budget priorities. I want to see what they all are. I want to review it. So I, too, will be voting no today. 
request to speak down at the bottom. Commissioner Woodward, that will bring by now, right? Yeah, Madam Chair, I mean, for a second, I mean, just, I mean, to, I just want to, like, reiterate the, I mean, the, oh, oh I think oh, Commissioner Charles hasn't spoken yet, so well, I'll, I'll yield Commissioner to Commissioner Woodward was, you're on the list. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I already spoke one, so. Okay, well, then I'll call on Commissioner Charles and then back to Commissioner Woodward and then back to Commissioner Kowal. Mm -hmm. Okay, Commissioner Charles, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, I see only my name uh, as a s requesting speaking for this particular uh, item. However, um, my interest, and I'm just throwing this out there, is in my eight months here, I haven't participated in any committee level meeting, uh, seen it on any agenda, where we engage with Oakland schools at all. And, you know, me, I'm team education all the way, but I don't think. I guess I need more insight into what this literary program is. I've spent the last 10 years on a school board where everything's been about literacy, uh, third grade reading, you know, triggers and things of that nature. And of course our public schools have to educate anyone with an IEP through the age of 25. Uh, so for me, this is a little disjointed. Um, we're a county commission, I don't know who we've spoken to in the education or the or the literary field who has given us some direction 30,000 may not be enough uh, so i'm i'm a little un i'm a little concerned that we're not we don't have the buy in or at least i'm and i'm not aware of any buy in yet from our education partners um, we just talked last week about the importance of commissioners taking the reins for these types of things that we're working on um, I, I feel like this is the cart being put before the horse because, again, I have no background insight into how we arrived at the dollar amount or just the, the fidelity of the program in, in and of itself. Uh, are we talking about 55-year-olds? Are we talking about people older than that, younger than that? I, I just really need more. So uh, I'm undecided as of right now. I guess you'll have to wait for the vote. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, then Commissioner Woodward for a second time, followed by Commissioner Kowal for a second time. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I mean, I think the, I mean, the point, I, I think Commissioner Charles, I mentioned this as being disjointed. I mean, I think it summarizes like my general thinking. Um, in support of improving literacy across the board for the entire continuum makes a lot of sense. I just want to make certain that we're not doing things that are redundant and that we are maximizing the resources and, and really set, I mean, having a clear indication and an evaluative metric to ensure this in the, that these dollars yield improved um, outcomes for I mean the, the targeted audience that we're seeking to do. So again, I, I'm not I mean conceptually, I support investing more resources in addressing literacy. Right now, I'm going to be voting no. I encourage um, commissioners to vote no. We can continue to work on this. And, and to Commissioner Charles' point, I think it warrants I mean a further con um, conversation with the Literacy Council and other things about like what has I mean. And I know there was some information that was sent around on past work. Um, is this the best use of these dollars? And that's just the, the conversation that I think we just need to have um, going forward. Thank you, Commissioner Woodward. Commissioner Kowal. Well, thank you again, Madam Chair. Um, to the commissioner from Southfield's um, question, I guess we all received these um, flyers in our mail. I know we don't always get into the actual meetings to, to see these, but it does a very, very good explanation of what this program is all about. There's 175,000 adults in Oakland County that function at the lowest levels of literacy and numeracy. And this is uh, towards adults, and it um, helps with the lowest levels of reading and math, those seeking a high school equivalency credential, those seeking to improve their job prospects, and those seeking citizenship. Um, this program, I, I'm not sure when the uh, Oakland Literacy Council was, was formed, but it's been going on for years, and it's mostly done through adult volunteers. And um, there are many success stories, like I said before, um, I just feel like uh, this has been under discussion for a bit and now we're kind of changing things midstream. I agree going forward about having a bit more deliberative approach to some of these things and setting aside a, 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 a number and then figuring out what fits into that. And I do agree with that going forward, but um, in this day when people are struggling to, you know, people that 
you know, we want people to come back to work. People are stopping and thinking about, okay, what does that mean? I don't have the job skills for this or that, and they want to better their lives. You can't be a carpenter or any other skilled trade unless you can you understand math and, and equations and calculations. So that's what this program is geared towards, and we work through the Oakland Literacy Council as well as our um, Oakland County uh, Workforce Development. Um, if that's, that's Jennifer Llewellyn, I believe, and uh, I, it's probably somewhere in my emails, a, a great um, support letter that she sent me, but that was quite some time ago. So, you know, I, I'm just like, this is like the 11th hour to me, and um, to put this back in the queue right now, because we're thinking of changing how we do things going forward, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna vote yes on this, and I'll be happy to work going forward about um, our different uh, projects that we want under the Board of Commissioners, and probably a more um, cohesive approach would be good, but um, I would really, it's just very important, I believe, to the success of this county and to people who just are trying to, um, you know, they wanna be in the workforce, they wanna be um, accountable for themselves, they just don't have the skills to do that right now. So I'm gonna vote yes, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kowal. Anybody else? Um, Chair, do we have a motion? Now? Ms. Chair? Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, Commissioner Charles. Yeah, thank you guys. Listen, I'm going to just be 100% here and just say I'd like to hear from Commissioner McGillivray if that's possible. If not, I understand. <laughs> Wise words, wise yeah. words. You've been around a long time. Yes. Madam Chairman. Commissioner McGilvery. Um, I'm going to be voting no on this, and there, I'm all for literacy, but I guess I'm not sure where exactly this is going and for what purpose. I mean, again, I'm, I'm all for getting people better jobs and training them and, and alike, but I, I just don't see the direction here. I mean, I've got one line item, number nine, uh, that's here, and it doesn't really say much. I didn't get any other information on it. So with that, I'm going to have to vote no at this point, but certainly I'm all in favor of literacy. Commissioner Cavell. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just a clarification question. What we're about to vote on is we vote yes if we want to keep the forty thousand dollars in the amendment. The we vote in thirty, and we vote no if we want to take it out for discussion later. Right. Okay, I want to vote with Eileen. I want to vote yes. If I said no before, my bad. Okay. With that, if there's nobody else, let's prompt the vote. Um, oh, do we have a motion? I think. Uh, Commissioner Kowal, yeah, that's right. Commissioner Moss made it, and it was supported by Commissioner Kowal, I think. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't. And the motion is what? Is to uh, approve item C9. Uh, Request to increase annual funding for the board literacy project. Right. My computer's up. Request to increase annual funding for the board literacy project is the item. So go ahead and prompt the vote, please. No. Okay, um, what was it? The motion failed uh, three to five. Um, so we are not going, we are not approving item number nine in section C. Moving on to item 10. So mine says item 9, and then it says item 11 to 13. Should be 10. Should be 10 right 
think if you refresh your screen, it should say 10 now. Oh, there it is. Okay. You were throwing us off a little bit by separating and keeping them together, but Pam and I, we got All right. Them. We're caught up. Has everybody got a finance committee recommended amendment number 10 in front of them? Okay. Um, Madam Chair. Yes. Commissioner McGilvery. I would make a motion to approve items 10 and 11. Uh, that's a local road improvement money, uh, LRIP, and the other is the tri-party uh, funding for uh, for um, the road commission. So I second. Okay, so that's moved by Commissioner McGilvery, sec supported by Commissioner Moss, um, to move items number 10 and 11. Uh, for the local road improvement funding and the tri-party road funding. Um, okay, let me... Discussion, anybody have any discussion on this? We all like road money going to our local communities, don't we? And this is the same amount as was in the budget last year. Correct. There is not yes. an increase or decrease. And one more th point I'll make, it requires a match. Uh, this funding requires a match from the local communities in, in the L, case of the LRIP, but in the case of um, the tri-party, it also, the road commission also. Where's the refresh? So there's matching funds. Uh, and this puts fresh roads in all of our local communities. Nobody has signed up to speak, so with that, oh, Commissioner Kowal, sorry. We're all still learning the machines. Thank you. I should have pushed the little button there, but okay. <laughs> yes, uh, ditto what you said, Chair, and um, I think it's a very important program for our, our local roads, and we can certainly use every penny we can get. So uh, these are both good programs. Agree, uh, Commissioner Woodward. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair. I, I, I mean, I, I think the the board has done a great job of creating these programs. I mean, really helping fill a gap um, in road funding. I mean, roads is not our core I mean, objective. With all this infrastructure, knock on wood, the infrastructure dollars coming down, um, I think this offers us an opportunity to um, continue to examine this and figure out where the best need for uh, infrastructure monies that we have available to contribute. So going forward, we should I mean, be having ongoing conversations about that. Thank you, Commissioner Woodward. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, this has allowed us to really set up a structure of communication between the county and the local communities already on their road priorities, and we've been looking at this year after year now for a while, so it is, should smooth that process going forward, looking at more road funding that, cross your fingers, we're gonna get. So, Anybody else have anything they wanna add to this? If not, then let's go ahead and prompt the vote on items uh, 10 and 11, is that right? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. And with that, we motion carries unanimously to support the road funding for another year. Um, moving on to item number C12. Uh, motion by Commissioner Kowal, supported by Commissioner Moss, uh, and that is the request of funding for the 52-2 District Courthouse Feasibility Study, uh, funds placed in the non-departmental transfer section of the budget and requires a separate resolution to authorize the expenditure once the project details are determined. And the dollar figure here is a million dollars for a feasibility study. And we have a motion on the floor. Does anybody want to comment? Um, Commissioner Kowal. So if you want to speak, um, oh, I keep forgetting. push that little green yes. button down in the lower right corner and then everybody will be lined up. But that's okay. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a slow learner. Me too. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just uh, really uh, feel that this is uh, certainly necessary. There's uh, so many security risks going on at the 522 courthouse, as well as health issues. Um, that uh, and uh, the issue of the whole MIDC privacy issues with HIPAA. Um, everybody's on top of everybody else, and uh, the way that. Uh, um, prisoners are taken in and out of the courthouse is, is alone is a risk. And during COVID, they've all been working uh, basically on top of each other. So um, this need has been known for quite some time now. So I'm, I'm anxious to move forward and get a feasibility study done on um, a, a new courthouse. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, anybody else? Commissioner Gershenson. Yeah, thank you. Um, certainly, we have all been aware of this problem for a long time, and um, I'm proud of this group for finally putting something forward. Unfortunately, so many of our courts are in need of upgrades that, um, while this is one of our courts and this is under our jurisdiction, I understand that, but uh, you know, at some point, I, I hope to encourage the local units of government to look at upgrading their courts. I, I do, I have seen the, some of the horrible circumstances in that court. I have visited it and there is definitely to me a violation of privacy the way it is right now. So I think this is a really good idea and one I'm happy to support. Okay. Commissioner Woodward. Yeah, um, so we've got a lot of infrastructure um, demands on us currently. Um, we're going through a feasibility of our all of our infrastructure. I think this warrants a conversation also and how our, I mean, how the Oakland County District Court, the 52nd as a whole, um, should be addressed. I mean, I'm not prepared to allocate a million dollars for another feasibility study. I mean, this has been on the, I guess, wish list. I mean, of building another courthouse. I know that there's demands in some of our other 52nd courts, as Commissioner I mean, um, uh, Gershenson mentioned. There's other demands. There's the, M M um, the Michigan um, MIDC, the Michigan Indigent Defense um, Commission, and uh, resources uh, available there to address. Uh, privacy for defendants going through the court system. And so I think this is premature at this moment, open to a conversation um, uh, with uh, the, the sponsor of this um, and possibly working um, through it by the, by the time we conclude the, the, um, the budget. But a million, I mean, allocating a million dollars right now um, seems premature given that we have so many other infrastructure um, needs on the uh, immediate horizon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Commissioner McGilvery. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I, just a quick question. Um, uh, this is a million dollars for a feasibility study for the courthouse. Now, I understand that they have needs there and it needs to be corrected. But how did we come to a million dollars for a feasibility study? Anybody know? Uh, well, I Commissioner Cole. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, in answer to that, that is money that's set aside in fund balance. That doesn't mean that it has the a million dollars has to be spent. So it's setting aside that money in the fund balance to do so. And um, this courthouse can has literally been kicked down the road for years and years and um, probably should have been addressed a long time ago. I think that we are inviting lawsuits if we don't start to move to do something about this particular courthouse. So I'm just going to urge a, a yes vote on this item. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colwell. Commissioner Woodward for a second time. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, um, I'm just gonna ask commissioners at this juncture to vote no on this right now. There are gonna be, there's gonna be probably ongoing conversations with facilities. I think it also relates to the overall capital outlay I mean, what our capital outlay plan is going forward. I don't know if, I mean, that's not baked into this budget completely yet. Mm -hmm. That's got to, I mean, th these things have to come together. Um, I know this thing's been on the wish list. It's been ridiculous. I, I share uh, Commissioner Cole's frustration. Like, why do we put things on the list if we never really have a plan to actually build these things? And I get the frustration there. Um, I'm committed to working with Commissioner Kowal and others to figure a way forward to look at these things. Not committed right now. I mean, can't support a million dollars right now on this when there's so many other pressing priorities. Okay, uh, Commissioner McGilvery, did you say everything you wanted? You're still listed as wanting to speak. 
I, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Charles. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, being shoulder deep into feasibility concepts and knowing a little bit more than even just a couple weeks ago about what it entails, understanding like, for example, the million dollars would go towards the actual architectural elements and things of that nature. Um, I, I guess where I would have to draw a line would be that the attachment um, isn't very enlightening and um, I don't like, I guess I'm a broken record today, but I don't like piecemeal. Uh, I like I like charts and, and visuals to let me know what our, our forest and tree perspective would be. And again, since it's been kicked down the, the hall, the, the, the street prior to many, prior to some of us newer commissioners getting on, um, I too would prefer to see how this is baked into the larger feasibility, the larger the grander picture. My final comment is I don't have any idea here either if there's a, you know, a sustainability element, uh, green infrastructure. It's just, uh, hey, let's spend a million dollars to see if something's feasible. Um, and so I'm kind of growing a little weary of, of feasibility studies at, at nauseum. Uh, so uh, I will make my vote when the time comes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Kowal. Uh, yes, once again, just to make a uh, clarification here about setting aside fund balance, that's just what we're doing today. Any appropriation or spending of that fund balance would have to be uh, accompanied by a resolution that would detail all these things that we're questioning right now. So this is setting aside money, and, and it's it, obviously it's not getting into the details of things. That would come with, with a, like I said, a resolution in order to authorize the spending of this. It might not be a million dollars. It might be 750000 It might be, and, and more detail will be in that resolution as to exactly what we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kowal. Commissioner Cavell, for a second time. Thanks, Chair. Uh, I like the idea of uh, putting money towards this court. I remember we all had a Zoom call and it was great and seemed very productive. So I see the value in having a feasibility stu study done as the first step. And I understand what you're saying, up to a million dollars and set aside to figure out later. I totally understand that. But I think there's an opportunity here, echoing what Commissioner Woodward said, of working with all facility, facilities and management because um, to also say what Commissioner Charles said, we argued for like two hours about $1.4 million feasibility study for an $88 million project and ended up thinking we, that they had to go back to the drawing board and rethink a lot of stuff. So uh, I agree with Chair Woodward, this feels a little early or that there's an opportunity to get more out of this if we're gonna put a million dollars towards something. Maybe it's not just this courthouse. Maybe there's others. So I'm gonna vote no now. Thank you, Commissioner Cavell. Commissioner Moss. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate process and I appreciate looking into things and I appreciate uh, studying things that, uh, the 52nd, these are our courts. These, this is our responsibility. This isn't something that is uh, something to be really nice to do or we would help people. This, these, this is our responsibility. The conditions in the 52nd uh, two court is uh, it's unacceptable at the moment, and that's our responsibility to um, make it, make it work. And if things go south there in any way, shape, or form, uh, we're going to be the ones that we held responsible, uh, quite properly so. And I appreciate the desire of the chair, uh, Chairman Woodward, to sort of regularize putting in these budget amendments rather than just it being a one you know one-off wish list at the very end of the process that we. Move, move to just move it along, and I appreciate that. I think that's a good idea. I just want to be sure that uh, we are going to follow up on this uh, very important aspect of the responsibilities of the board, and that this uh, does not just become a motion to punt. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, Commissioner Moss. Uh, Commissioner Cavell, did you want to speak for a third time? This is the second time, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just keeping true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, uh, to what you were just saying there, Commissioner Moss, since we didn't get the Oakland literacy thing, stands the reason that some of us will be hounding about these sorts of things if this doesn't go through. So yeah, I'm with you there. Thank you, Commissioner. So um, 
I have a question about um, process a little bit. Um, there's a study going on right now out of April Lynch's department to look at all of the facilities that the county owns. How many buildings do we have, where are they, and all of that. And does this building fit into that? Is this being part of that study? Yes, it is. That, it is. Uh, that study is, is comprehensive across. Okay. So based on what we learned from that study about this facility, you know, what we found talking about the sheriffs a couple of weeks ago was um, there's this question of, okay, here's what we know we need, but now where do we put it and what does that have to look like? And I think that's part of the question here. Do we modify the building we have? Do we find a new piece of property? Do we have a new piece of property that we decide to build on? Uh, some hybrid version of that, go to a different existing building and turn it into a court. Those questions have not been fleshed out, I don't think. But I think there's a real understanding by the Board of Commissioners as well as the administration that something needs to move on this. Um, I'm, I'm nervous about a million dollars uh, because we don't know what that will turn into. I, I would like to have a figure in here for this but um, I, I'm squishy on a million dollars. So I'm gonna vote no on this uh, at this moment. And if I could just add, Madam Chair, you know, part of the, uh, of the study that's ongoing is also based around operational needs of, of departments and the courts and, 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 and all, of our, all of our other county operations in terms of what does the, the the next stage of, of hybrid work or remote work look like we know the courts are in a process of, of of examining which parts of 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 doing proceedings on a on a, a remote basis has actually worked so I think it you know it fits you know it fits into that that comprehensive view not just in terms of all facilities but also in terms of, of both the pure facility perspective and the operational perspective. That's a very good point. Thank you. Commissioner Gershenson. Well, thank you. Um, I am definitely in support of looking at this court. I feel there are issues. and But as other commissioners have said, there are issues in, in many of our courts. And I think that's a very good point that you make about the potential of remote meetings. So I guess I would, um, I would be able to support this not moving forward today at a million dollars, but that we have an understanding and a commitment that I would like to see this remain an issue for us and, and not to sweep it under the rug. It is our responsibility. Something terrible could happen, but life is changing and the work environment is changing. So um, with the commissioner's reluctance on the million, I can see that postponing this for me would be okay, but I, I am also committing to wanting to see something done here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Kowal. Uh, thank you. Yeah, um, I just have a whole laundry list of, of items that are concerns with this court and also um, the population that this court serve, serves has increased and um, Certainly the demands on the judicial system have not uh, diminished at all. And this is like, you know, start the clock ticking now, it'll be five years before they get any kind of new facility. That's how long it's gonna take. And I think, I just feel like by delaying it, um, I'll, I'll be back here in finance one day in closed session, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Charles. Yeah, final comment, I, do, I would like to apologize, but I'm not gonna apologize, um, is, you know, just a couple weeks ago, the courts came and did their budget hearing process. And probably till January of 2022, I'm gonna lean on this being new piece. And so for me, I don't quite follow why we tell a department to cut, 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 and then we look for ways to then uh, fill in those gaps here here at our table for, for the purposes of what we're discussing today. Um, so 
I do recall their their talk during their hearing, and I know that this has been, like you said, kicked down the down the corridor for a while. Um, is it is it out of the purview that they would have brought this? I think there was some mention of it, um, but why why ask them to cut if we know that they need these things, and then say, hey, we'll we'll throw you a million dollars to to study something. Uh, so I, I guess I'm now echoing uh, Commissioner Gershenson just to say that I, I think it's worthwhile and certainly need it, but I would like to see it a part of the bigger the bigger picture. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Charles. Um, so is there any, I'll ask this, is there any uh, interest in lowering the dollar figure keeping the line item, but lowering the dollar figure. Um, Commissioner Kowal. Um, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'd be um, happy to amend my motion to a, a lesser number, I guess. I don't know what would be acceptable to the committee, 750, 500, um, if that's a, a factor that's going to change any minds here today. Um, I think that uh, that's something that we could definitely consider. Um, Commissioner Woodward. I mean, my preference, uh, Madam Chair, is um, to I mean, explore, I mean, working with the sponsor of this between now and adoption of the budget, and we might be able to come to some, I mean, some arrangement to move forward on this. But I, I'm not prepared today to support a particular, a, a, a particular dollar amount. Okay. Um, everybody hear that? Okay. With that, mm. Um, I just wanted to say I will hold the chair to that promise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Your list is growing. <laughs> no, that's good. We've got two that's issues. I like this. Okay. okay. Um, no, I see no other speakers. Um, I guess we can go ahead and prompt the vote on the request for funding of the district courthouse feasibility study for district court 52-2. Item number 12. Are Okay, the motion fails uh, with a proviso that the chair is going to speak at great length with Commissioner Kowal and find an agreeable About this way to resolve literacy. this. <coughs> okay, item number 13 is the Board of Commissioners request to add 300,000 to the BOC departmental budget for routine board activities and initiatives also to add 300,000 to management and budget fiscal services for consulting services, including grant writing consulting services to assist county departments. And in addition to add a one-time $1 million placeholder in the non-departmental transfers general fund budget for larger initiatives that will require a separate resolution to reallocate the funding to the appropriate department placeholder in the non-departmental -trans, non transfer special projects 731822 line item. So I will just preface this with, uh, this is what I was speaking about earlier, which is trying to streamline and elevate those projects that the Board of Commission Commissioners uh, want to work on uh, and want to uh, raise up and lift up and, and make happen. And they, they vary everything this past year from uh, boat washing stations to, um, uh, you know, the Better for Breakfast program. It's really a wide range of, of funding. And what we want to do is separate these out so that we understand what they are, how big they are, how long they last. And the commission itself does a better job of vetting all these projects to make sure that when we do allocate the money, there's a plan in place for it to actually be executed. So um, the, the million was set aside for those bigger projects. $300,000 is set aside for some of those smaller, anywhere from $500 to under $50,000. And then 
the grant writing piece of it, we've kicked around quite a bit because many of the departments at the county right now are having difficulty writing all the grants that they could to bring in funding back, revenue back to the county. I had, uh, a couple of months ago, I was helping one of the judges with a $500,000 grant they wanted to apply for, but they had no way to write that grant. And so we've been talking for a while about whether that should reside in the Board of Commissioners <clears throat> or the executive branch. And um, so uh, it's going it to reside in the Management and Budget Fiscal Services Department. Um, but we are setting aside $100,000 for that plus as part of that $300,000. So that's what this item is all about. And I will open it up to the commission for um, discussion. We need a motion. I do need a motion for item number 13. Commissioner Cavell supported by Commissioner McGilvery. We'll line them up, everybody. Commissioner Kowal, you get to go first. Um, thank you, and I, I, I agree with some aspects of this, but um, it was just spoken by another commissioner that we were asking all these departments to cut, and then we're growing um, our discretionary spending mm -hmm. under the Board of Commissioners. Um, I agree with the grant writing, um, some other things, but um, I, 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 I quite frankly don't agree with some of the things that we've spent, been spending money on. We're growing government. We're getting involved in things that as a county government, providing the services that county government are, should be providing. Uh, we're getting into other areas, and uh, like I said, we're just growing government. So this is kind of a blank check to keep on doing this. And I, I agree with the whole thing of bringing everything under one umbrella, but right now I have a lot of questions about this, um, considering past projects that we've gotten involved in. Um, so just throwing that out there. Appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner Woodward. Thank you, um, uh, Madam Chair. And, and I, I guess I would like to hear about some of these projects that we got involved in that is a great concern because we've historically done these things with uh, uh, broad bipartisan support. But I mean, to the point of the previous speaker, I mean, we just approved $4 million for roads, which is clearly something outside the core function of county government. And so, I mean, I think the comment's a little bit disingenuous. <laughs> Everything that this board has undertaken, particularly in the last few years and beyond, has been to improve the lives of the residents of Oakland County. I think this sets up a system um, on the a million dollars of um, set aside for these special projects that what, it might be a department bringing those ideas and, and then being vetted through the commission process. It might be the executive office. It might be commissioners that identify problems that can be addressed. These are things that can be brought forward, vetted, and we take action to um, improve the lives and communities here in Oakland County. As far as the other things, things like um, addressing needs and combating uh, uh, human trafficking, things about um, trying to protect our environment, things about um, uh, it, 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 taking, I mean, taking action and being supportive of um, a special events across our, our county. These are all appropriate things, and I think it is a, a, a appropriate, and I, and I want to commend the, the chair of working towards a solution that puts this all in one place that we can actually um, have a do I mean, amount, budget amount, and work, work against that and track accordingly. And then the lastly, I mean, when we talk about, I just want to like underscore like this, like the asking of cuts. The, the request to departments to reduce their compensation um, line item, I mean, that the 10% the, the over a period of time, is to pay for the compensation study that we all implemented um, last year. And it is to bring us so that we're no longer in a, um, uh, I mean, that, so that we're able to pay for the, the, the talent and the employees that we have within the constraints of the dollars that come in on an annual basis. So um, we are looking specifically at, those are operational costs, to make certain that it fits within um, the, the, the revenues being brought in. It's a fiscally responsible action to do that. These types of things are not ongoing structural things. Um, if a belt tightening is required in order to meet other budgetary obligations, we have the ability to do that. These are um, one um, t generally one type of expenditures. Um, it is the appropriate way to do things and is consistent with the practice of this board and consistent with the th resources that we have been spending over the last uh, many, many years. I mean, I guess I'll come back. The 
Um, the, the, what, be, before COVID, we launched an effort to make sure that we had I mean, schools, um, to help schools um, purchase uh, 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 water refilling bottle uh, stations um, that had uh, redundant filtration in them. And we made that available across Oakland County, a resounding success, the first county in the entire state to do this, and then became a, a mantra that others started adopting. And particularly in COVID, what a wonderful thing to have. I mean, to have these in every school building across Oakland County that I mean, kids don't have to, I mean, are not putting their face close up to, um, I mean, water refilling stations as kids have gone back to school. So uh, I, I stand by the actions of this board and the actions of this county. And I think this is a, a great way of organizing ourselves and working collaboratively to solve solutions as they come up. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Cavell. Yeah, um, just to also respond to what you were saying, Commissioner Kowal, kind of to echo what the chair was saying. Um, right, these investments are to make our government more nimble and adaptive and responsive to the 21st century needs of its people. And it's, I think, not a coincidence that we are one of the fastest aging counties and one of the fastest aging states in the country because we have not been nimble, adaptive, and responsive to the people's needs in a way that we are now growing into that. So part of that means investing where it's necessary, like in revenue producing places like a grants officer or grants group, but also in making sure that, you know, we're doing the compensation study to make sure our government can meet the need of the future, not just respond to what is. Or withdraw. Uh, next up is Commissioner Charles, followed by the Honorable Commissioner Chuck Moss. <laughs> yes, I need to. I need to update my name. Really? The right Honorable. All right, Commissioner Charles. <laughs> Thank you. I just needed a little bit of clarification, Chair. I know you you read the actual line item, and for some reason, it's still not resonating. It's a million flat, or I'm just trying to figure out that 300, and then you talked about the other 300. Is that all contained in the million? Are we talking 1.3? Just a little clarification for me. Thanks. Okay, for the Board of Commissioners, it's actually 1 million um, placeholder in the non departmental general fund, but 300,000 in the BOC departmental fund. Um, so that's the 1.3 right there. Um, so the 300,000 would be directly in our department budget to be spent in ways that we as commissioners agree to spend them. Um, the million would be uh, for larger initiatives requiring separate resolutions. The other $300,000 call, that's called out is actually in the management and budget and fiscal services department. That is a change and part of that is the grant funding. But that is to, to manage all of this money that's coming to us, um, you know, ARP and so on coming forward. Management and budget, uh, fiscal services is, there's a $300,000 figure in here for that, which includes the grant writing. Okay. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Charles, and the Honorable Commissioner Chuck Moss. Gee, I'm a, this is great. Thank you. I'd say the right honorable. I, I don't think I'd ever I'm be just the, reading what it says here. That's yeah. all. No, no, no character aspersions. The honorable Charles Joseph here. Moss III Esquire, but we'll take that. Yeah. Um, it says Charles. Uh, yeah, I want to, uh, before I go, by the way, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Cavell, the, it may not be necessarily a bad thing that the county is uh, getting older. I mean, this is a great place to age gracefully, and I'll. I'm not saying about myself, but uh, today, of course, today is my birthday. So, uh, congrats! Oh, uh, thank you. So, uh, Oakland County is uh, once again it's a great place to get older because uh, I think we're all doing it. Uh, according <laughs> to, uh, the alternative, that's for sure. All right. So, uh, if if I um, am getting a sense of what is uh, being discussed as we're talking about the agenda and the excuse me the uh, the amendments from our uh, uh, chair, uh, Mr. Woodward, is that. Uh, there's essentially going to be uh, what amounts to a new um, sort of a discipline on commissioner earmarks to uh, take a phrase that we all understand whether that it's totally accurate or not. Instead of commissioners putting in something this, 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 and this, that we're going to have a, a process or some sort of a 
and whatever to look at each one and put it into a bigger picture. Am I correct? I, I mean, yes. I mean, every. I mean, uh, particularly in the million dollars, the special project, non-departmental. I'm sorry. Can you uh, speak up? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, correct. I mean, a resolution would be required to. I mean, I mean, if, if to draw for resources from that million dollars, and go through the committee process and vetting, and obviously have to rank on priorities um, shared by this board. So. Okay. I mean, in some senses, I'm a, a brand newbie, and in other senses, not. But uh, this is, uh, is, is sort of in my newbie hat here. Okay. So this is going to be the way that we are going to be basically going on, or at least you are proposing that we go on from here on out, is not simply to throw things in uh, kind of in an ad hoc basis or whatever at the end of the, you know, in the budget process, but to say we are going to look at this with a new discipline. Is that correct? I, I mean, I would say that this I mean, helps organize. I mean, the way that historically we've done in, in I mean, pulling on your... Um, sage-like uh, experience. Of well, you were this. there too. So, uh, so I mean, I know. <laughs> but it, I mean, in turn, I mean, where we would assign fund balance and later come back with a resolution, and we'd have a bunch of assigned fund balances and be pulling from things over time. The discipline here is like here we're working from a budget, and I mean, identifying priorities and making certain that things fall within that um, a, as we consider uh, what things to fund and what things not to fund. Right. So, so I would so, say that is a, uh, that would be a, a, a new discipline I mean, based on the, the historic practice. Okay. So for something, for instance, let's say the um, the needs of the fifty second second uh, the fifty second two district court, uh, just because that was something we talked about, that would go into the the hopper, if you will, and be looked at. I, mean, how, I, I just want to know how that works. I think it's a great idea. I just want to know how you how we intend to do it. I, well, so and by this are, committee, I would assume let, finance. Okay, well, I guess there are two questions to that, and I guess I'll let the chair also, if she wants to weigh in. I mean, we looked at the activities that we embarked on last year, and you kind of put a budget frame. I mean, kind of a budget framework around that. Now, um, I mean, if a million dollars is what the the fifty second is, and is going to scoop all that up, I mean, I, and I guess I would push back to say, well. We also have a capital outlay program that we, I mean, as a board, are required to also adopt and everything, and, and that maybe a piece of that is in there. So I think I, I think it's important to recognize the complexity of this. Um, these are this one million dollars is designed for those projects that are like more than fifty thousand dollars. Go through the resolution process, um, and I mean, I think as a board that we have an obligation to like, determine the criteria for helping evaluate and, and vet it as a uh, as a worthy investment of these dollars um, to improve the lives of people in our community, to help them support our communities, et cetera. So um, I mean, I think I'm a big believer that all ideas deserve um, a, ability to be explored, worked on, um, and, and, and vetted, uh, and, and then working together. I mean, as you know, and some, some of these things t is a multi-year process. I mean, the water refilling bottle station was a three-year process um, from start to finish. Um, and it just, I mean, because we didn't have the dollars all up front to be able to do it the first year, and so we, look, we we pace it out over a period of time. So I think that is how, how I envision us as a board bringing these ideas forward, working on these things, and then trying to find a, a, a mutually agreeable, um, hopefully a broad bipartisan support to uh, to advance. A broad bipartisan is always, always preferable. Uh, now, the idea is, so this would be brought through, I mean, I'm, I'm just wanting to figure out how this works and how, or excuse me, how it's going to work. Uh, this would be through Finance Committee and all that, right? Right. right. Through Finance Committee, but right. I think also the appropriate policy, policy. Um, committees that, I mean, that intersect with the topic um, at hand. Um, obviously, by resolution, like, this is not money that's been appropriated. It would, I mean, they, they, to release these funds would require a resolution to come through this process and also, in, I mean, working in collaboration with the executive office to, I mean, to release these dollars for said project. Okay, I just want to have a word. Thank, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Kowal. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and um, I do agree with Commissioner Woodward on many of these points, and in the interest of the a good process and more transparency, I will support this, um, this I will, will be voting yes on this amendment today. Thank you. Appreciate that, thank you. Um, Commissioner Moss, I, uh, you ask a good question, which is how will this all work? And I don't think we've got that all fleshed out completely yet. So if you're interested in being part of that conversation, I would love to have your participation. I might be, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Anybody else have any other comments or questions? All right, well with that then, let's go ahead and prompt uh, the vote on item number 13. McGillivray? Yes. Go ahead. All right, the motion is approved on uh, item number 13. Uh, Commissioner Kowal, did you have an item you wanted to raise up? Uh, yes, I would like to, if I may, go back and um, to the courthouse, uh, the 52-2 issue. Um, early this morning, I did receive um, uh, another amendment uh, rather than the one million dollars for the feasibility study it was a hundred thousand dollars for I believe a needs-based assessment through plant Moran and uh, I would like to um, and perhaps because I did receive that obviously from it came I don't know who sent it to me. Um, anyway, that that was that's I guess kind of what I thought what we would be happening today. So I was a little bit surprised that the million was still in there. But at this um, stage of the game, I think that um, I would like to propose the uh, $100,000 for a needs-based assessment by Plant Moran. The language is, if I can find it here. Okay. And this came from... Uh, this is, uh, if I, if I, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, this yeah. is a, a concept that had been discussed uh, as an alternative as we move down the road. Here would be, be asking Plant Moran, you know, at a cost of, of hopefully less than a hundred thousand dollars to, you know, drill down a level further with respect to the the Clarkston Courthouse in terms of what some of the options would be. Okay. So would this be revisiting item number? Well, Commissioner, or yeah, Commissioner Woodward. Um, I mean, I think uh, I mean, Commissioner Cole is proposing a new amendment. I mean, but maybe it's a similar topic, just a different amount. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think for me, I mean, it's like again, I am very open to continuing to have the conversation. I'm not prepared to vote for something right now, um, but I mean, I could, I mean, definitely um, uh, possibly work towards a grand bargain um, when we get to the floor um, at the end of the month, end of September. Okay. Uh, well, having heard that, then I will withdraw my motion and uh, look forward to working with the chair. Okay. Thank you. I just thought I, you know, Hail Mary pass there. All right. <laughs> um, thank you, commissioners. Okay. Um, so we have passed all of items A, B, and C, correct? Um, so I need to go back to my agenda. Madam Chairman? Yes. I Commissioner would make a motion McGillery. to authorize a public notice and public hearing set for September 29th uh, at 6.15. Pam's. Just a point of order. Yes. Um, we have a motion on the table for the whole budget, so we just need to have a uh, motion, uh, vote on the uh, budget as amended. All the amendments that we just Okay. Oh. So, sorry. Right. Thank you. That's why we have the staff here to keep us in order. Okay, um, so we need to call the vote on the budget 2022 to 2024 Oakland County budget as amended. Uh, um, there's a question on the floor. Commissioner Charles. Yeah, I thought my request to speak had gotten booted, but I think when you go back to eight, you see it there. And I see Gwen, you have raised your hand to speak. <laughs> um, I want to. This was my question way back when we first did the motion for this, when the chairman moved. Uh, so my question to the chair was simply uh, to just maybe in a minute or so, because you you made the motion, therefore you're likely supporting of it, uh, just a summary of why. Thank you. Yeah, the budget overall. Um, I withdrew my own comment which was on there accidentally, but uh, okay. Commissioner Woodward. Uh, thank you, thank you, Commissioner Charles. Um, yes, I mean, I, I am, uh, I wanna, I mean, first commend 
uh, the Finance Committee, I mean, all the work that you've done, uh, meeting with all the departments, and I mean, getting to this point, um, as well as the county executive and the recommended budget, uh, with uh, I mean, coming back to the the top of the uh, the budget the budget presentation that the executive delivered with um, the entire executive team, uh, this budget moves us closer to uh, uh, living into our truth and budgeting. Uh, guidelines and uh, objective to make certain that the dollars coming in annually fund the government um, of Oakland County um, and all the priorities there within. I think it makes appropriate strategic investments, um, particularly um, in the areas of cybersecurity and um, the prosecutor's office with the Conviction Integrity Unit. I think it implements um, good budgeting practices. Um, I mean, as with a lot of these amendments that we've put forward, um, that um, requires not only further collaboration, but will actually add a layer um, of uh, transparency. And um, I mean, making certain that as a as a board that we're leaning into, uh, making certain that uh, I mean, we are appropriately uh, fulfilling our constitutional statutory responsibility to make sure that these dollars are spent uh, appropriately. And um, I mean, I think that this is, uh, it, it's a demonstration of the long traditions in Oakland County of being able to work with all of our electeds and appointed leaders uh, to ensure that Oakland County remains um, the leader in the state and one of the leading counties in this country. And I am very excited to support this, um, I mean, this recommendation. At, with acknowledging that I think there's some conversations um, with uh, members on this committee to work on some of these things. There might be some other outstanding uh, issues and that we can work on. But I think at this, um, at this stage, the Finance Committee has done a, a good job to be able to um, bring a product forward that uh, funds the government for next year. And recognizing the complexity in this time that we also have um, a, a tremendous amount of ARPA resources to I mean, help build on the county's resilience and help um, get this county through this pandemic. And so, um, I mean, you guys have been doing this in tandem the entire way. And I think that there's, I mean, it, it's a good model moving forward. And I'm looking forward to a broad support for this budget uh, end of September. Thank you. Anyone else? Thoughts off the top of my head. <laughs> Okay, uh, if nobody else has any other comments, um, we need to, we have a motion, right? We need to call the roll or prompt the vote on the item number eight, the fiscal year 2022-2024 county executive recommended budget. Yes. Thank you. We have a unanimous vote. Thank you to the Finance Commission for that, uh, Finance Committee. And with that, let's see. Is there, uh, Commissioner McGilvery? Is Madam he? Chair, I would make a motion to authorize a public notice and public hearing set for September 29th at 6.15 p.m. Need to support? Supported by Commissioner Cavell. Okay, anybody have any comments on that? Please prompt the vote. Yes. We can go ahead and post that public notice and for our public hearing. Is there any other business to come before this committee today? Uh, if not, I will call this meeting adjourned at 11.55. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much.